Albert Einstein said that a person who never made a mistake never tried anything new. And there's a lot of value in that mindset, acknowledging that in order to progress in life or in business, you need to be constantly willing to step outside of your comfort zone. And while I have admittedly been very conservative with my own investing strategies over the years, I still have stepped out of my comfort zone more times than I can count. So naturally I've made some big mistakes that have ended up being very costly for me. But as they say, hindsight is 2020. So even though at the time I didn't realize that what I was doing wasn't exactly right, I can now clearly see how some decisions that I made ended up being big mistakes in the end. In today's video, I'm going to talk about what I would consider my biggest real estate investing mistake to date and what I wish that I had done differently. If you're new to my channel, my name is Scott. I'm a real estate investor. I've been doing this for about 10 years now. And here on my channel, I talk about all things real estate, including my own experience and then just my perspective on other real estate related topics. So if you're into that kind of thing, think about hitting subscribe. And we'll get into the video now, but as always, Always, if you wouldn't mind just hitting the like button down below for me, that really helps to support this video and my channel. For anybody who's been following me for a while, you know that I've done just about every type of real estate investment you can imagine, including house flips, wholesaling, new builds, short-term rentals, long-term rentals, and I recently started getting into commercial real estate as well. And while I did get my real estate license right out of high school, which by the way, has been inactive for about 10 years now, I don't have any other formal education on this business. I learned almost everything that I know today by first consuming a ton of content by reading books and blogs and listening to podcasts and things like that. And then just by networking with local people who are in the business and basically just being a sponge and absorbing as much information as I possibly could about the real estate market, what buyers are looking for, how to finance deals, and everything else. So naturally, I've had a bit of a bumpy road on some of the deals that I've done, but to be honest, I don't even think that having any type of a formal education would have helped me in any of those circumstances because sometimes the best way and the only way to learn is just by getting your feet wet and actually doing deals. I wanted to share that bit of backstory with you guys to help you understand that you definitely don't need any type of formal education if you're interested in getting involved in real estate state at some point in your life, but you also shouldn't go into it blind because I really believe that had I not spent so much time mentally preparing for that first deal that I could have made way more mistakes in the beginning and lost way more money. So the deal that we're going to talk about today is actually the biggest real estate deal that I've ever done. It's one that I've never talked about here on my channel and this one is a doozy. This was a luxury residential house flip that I did a couple of years back that was just a few miles away from my house that I bought in early 2018 and I sold in 2019. I call this one the mountainside project because it was a beautiful property right on the side of a mountain right in the middle of the city sitting on a 1.2 acre lot with beautiful views of the mountain from the backyard and then beautiful views of the city from the front yard. The loose numbers on this deal when I was first looking at it were that I would buy it for $950,000, I would sink about $600,000 into a high-end remodel including the landscaping and then I would sell it for about $2.25 million. This was going to be the biggest project that I'd ever done by by far and I definitely didn't have the money to fund the project myself so the first thing on my to-do list was bring together a team of investors who are willing to invest in me and this project and I found four people who were a perfect fit then the next step is I needed to put together a team of a general contractor an architect a designer and a stager I ended up closing on the house and putting together the team and this deal ended up teaching me more than any other project that I'd ever done by far due to the multiple layers plus just the size of the project and then the importance of getting every Every single intricate detail right in order to pull it off. One of the most intimidating parts going into this whole thing is that my real estate agent made it very clear to me from the beginning that whenever I was done and we listed this project for sale at over two million dollars that the buyers that would be coming through would be very particular buyers, very sophisticated buyers, and they would be paying attention to every single square inch of this build out before even thinking about writing an offer. So the stakes were high as I started putting the team together and looking for people who were qualified to do the job but also people who could do the work at a reasonable price so there's still room for me to make money at the end. Anyways, on to what I'd consider the biggest mistake that I made on this one and it didn't even become clear to me until about six months in. So at that point, it was far too late for me to stop and start over. So here was my mistake. I hired the wrong contractor for the job. And that might not sound like a big deal at first, but you're about to find out that hiring the wrong contractor for this job not only cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars, but it could have bankrupted me if other things didn't end up working in my favor. My experience on prior flips is that if I was doing a smaller flip, I would just sub all the contractor work out myself. And if I was doing a larger house flip, I would hire a general contractor to oversee everything for me. But since I had never done a luxury house flip like this one before, 
before, I just had to use my best judgment on who the best general contractor was for this job. The GC that I ended up hiring was someone that I'd worked with many times in the past. He was licensed, bonded, and insured, and he felt really confident that he would be able to complete the scope of work that I was asking of him. That scope of work was pretty intense because we were taking a 3,000 square foot house and we were turning it into a 5,000 square foot house and we were remodeling everything inside and out, including the finishes, the facade, the footprint, the electrical system, the HVAC system, the roof, and we even had to replace the sewer system. On the surface, it probably sounds like any other house flip, but because the house and the lot were so large, we needed five times the material for every phase and that meant that every phase ended up taking like five times as long. Plus, to complicate things even further, this project is what the city considered mountainside because it technically did sit halfway up the mountain, which just really complicated things when it came to getting permits and doing the inspections. But the biggest part of the problem and the issue that really started to present itself is when I realized that the general contractor that I hired didn't have a strong enough list of subcontractors who had experience working on luxury properties. That meant that they were pretty rough around the edges when it came to the fit and finish of their work. So ultimately, I needed to come through and basically micromanage every phase of this flip myself because the guys that the general contractor was hiring were just used to doing cheaper cookie cutter flips and they didn't understand the level of quality that we absolutely needed to achieve on this one. The tile guys would come through and they would install hundreds of square feet of tile only to have me come and ask them to tear it all out because the tile was installed all uneven or the grout lines weren't consistent. The trim guys would come through and install the baseboards and the door casing, but I'd ask them to tear a lot of that out as well because they didn't get the cuts right. The cabinet guys came out to install the cabinets only for me to go and inspect that part of the project and discover that we didn't have the soft close features that I asked for or the integrated lighting. The plumber didn't pay close enough attention to the plans and so he ended up installing a lot of the water lines and even one sewer line in the wrong spot. The electrician ended up missing installing several three-way switches. He put several can lights in the wrong places and he made a complete rat's nest out of the low voltage speaker wire. And the paint was the worst part. I ended up having to get this whole house repainted almost three times due to the painters not taping things off properly, painting materials that shouldn't have been painted, and just generally doing a really bad job. And it should have been the general contractor's responsibility to manage all of these subcontractors not showing up on time or just generally doing a bad bad job but he was so wrapped up with all of his other jobs and spread super thin so he was absent like half the time. Due to the inexperience of my general contractor plus the poor selection of subcontractors, this rehab ended up costing me over $1 million to complete in total. And if you remember, my budget on this place was $600,000, so yes, we went over $400,000 over budget. Thankfully, by the end of it, all of the quality issues were addressed, but I lost a lot of my sanity along the way and I probably lost a little bit of hair too as I saw tens of thousands of dollars going out every week that we weren't planning on spending. And to make matters even worse, we went into this thinking that it would take about eight months from start to finish to do the build out, which seemed totally reasonable to me because I built houses from scratch in that amount of time, but it ended up taking us 15 months to get this rehab complete. The holding costs on a project this large were super high and even with me negotiating low rates on the money, I was still shelling out over $10,000 per month towards the end of the project. So not only did the general contractor's performance cost me over $400,000 on this deal, due to how long it took to get the project done, I was over $50,000 above what my holding cost budget was as well. But now here comes the good news. I am extremely grateful that the market had improved significantly over the course of the 15 months that I was working on this house. When my real estate agent first walked through the finished project, he suggested that we list the home for $2.75 million. This was $500,000 more than we initially expected to list the house for when we first got started. And after the house was beautifully staged, photos were taken, and my agent did some heavy pre-marketing, we ended up getting an offer on this place for $2.65 million, which I accepted. The deal ultimately closed and it ultimately ended up being a home run in terms of profit, but had the market not improved as much as it did over the course of those 15 months, this project could have potentially lost me a ton of money. But the universe had different plans for me and while I consider this project to be one that I'm most proud of, I also consider it to be the one that I made the biggest mistake on and I learned that I need to make sure that I'm hiring the right person for the job every time with no exceptions, especially on a high stakes deal like this one. I recommend that you follow this thought process when you work with contractors going forward and also remember that it's a good plan to try to get three bids from three different contractors for every job. This will save you a lot of headache and it'll make 
sure that you're not setting yourself up for a huge disappointment in a costly journey like I had experienced on this mountainside project. I've been hesitant to share this video on my channel because I don't want to ever come across as bad mouth or bashing anybody that I've worked with and I hope that this video doesn't come across that way. While I am super bummed about how things turned out with this contractor, I know that he's also personally really disappointed in his performance overall as well and things did not end up good between him and I in the short term, but I'm happy to say that long term we were able to get over our differences. I'm not gonna lie though that while we did get over our differences, this deal put a bad enough taste in my mouth that I don't plan on ever working with this specific GC again. I'm grateful for the lessons that I learned on this project and I hope that the video today will help you guys to avoid similar mistakes in the future if you're doing a project like this one. And believe me, I have made many more mistakes over the years that I could talk about in future videos with you guys if you'd like, so let me know in the comments below if you're interested in hearing more. If you enjoyed the video today, just one more reminder to hit subscribe down below because I'm posting new videos every week just like this one. And another friendly reminder to hit the like button down below for me as well because that'll really help me out a ton. But that's all I've got for you guys this time. So until next time, see ya.